They say, whoever they are, that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. To my eyes, at least, this is a great looking object. It's the Colbor CL60R. It has this futuristic industrial design quality to it that wouldn't look out of place in a science fiction movie, and I mean a good one, like Interstellar, not Battlefield Earth. It has this aluminium alloy outer case and has this sort of solidness to it that just feels quality without being heavy. It's also super small for a light that can put out this sort of power. 2600 looks at only one meter. That's without the included power reflector thingy or 22,974 lux at 3.3 feet with the included power reflector. It's so small that the included Bowens mount is actually wider than the light itself. Everything about this light, from the included reflector to the carry bag, has a feel of quality about it. Everything is strangely tactile, and I really like that. I like it when companies try something new. I think we should really praise anybody who is willing to take a risk and try something different. Apart from just looking good, the body of the CL60R has a more practical use. The idea is that up to 10 of these units can be slotted together to create a kind of bank of lights, or one big super light if you want to think about it that way, which is exactly how I want to think about it. Colbor call it the power cube system, which sounds pretty fancy. These sort of wings on the side of the light can slot into the grooves or chutes on the top and bottom of the other units, sort of like a tripod and tripod plate deal. And so you don't have to go around changing the settings on multiple units, there's a handy feature where you can set one light as the command unit and the other lights as the receivers, so you only have to change the settings once and it will pass that over onto all the other lights. In fact, you can assign the lights to different subgroups and control each group from the same command unit. I have to say that that is pretty clever. The light is bicolor, which means you can change the temperature from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin, and it has the full 360 degree color, which means you can set the light to green or purple or any color under the rainbow that you like. It also has a claimed CRI of 97, which is pretty impressive. The fan has a quiet mode that produces less than 20 dB, and it has 13 built-in effects. These include fire, sparks, CCT chase, pulsing, beacon, TV, party, explosion, faulty bulb, welding, strobe, lightning, and SOS. And of course, like most of the lights today, you can download an app that lets you control it all from your phone. Okay, I have to admit that I didn't see this one coming. The light has what Colbar call a sensitive audio system, meaning that the light can actually listen to what's going on around it and match the lighting to what it's hearing play up-tempo music, and the light should produce a lighting effect that matches. I can understand why this might be a useful feature for something like disco lights, the type of lights that a mobile wedding DJ might use, but in a filmmaking light kit, I can only really think that it would be useful in shooting music videos. Maybe. Seems like a strange inclusion to me. But hey, if you want to develop a reputation as a filmmaker or photographer who is always up for a party, then this feature might be right up your street. And I guess that old saying applies here. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. The more features that companies can pack into these lights, the better for us, the end user. And I have to say, I'm really loving this light. I used Joel Famolaro's Phantom LUTs to colour grade all the B-roll on this video. 
If you like the way it looks, then you can check out the link in the description and use the code CHRIS15 to get a 15% discount at checkout. As a filmmaker, we tend to obsess over images. Visual aesthetics mean something to us, and this could be our weakness. Beautiful things can blind us to their flaws. It's only after some time that we begin to realize not everything is quite as it seems, and problems begin to show themselves. The clever interlocking power cube system leads to a problem. If you look at almost any other light, they have a handle on the back for moving the light. When you have any sort of light modifier on this light, like a softbox, it becomes very hard to angle or pivot because there's nothing to hold onto. You don't have enough leverage over the weight of the softbox. So I think you're gonna be limited with how big a modifier you could ever actually use with this light. The nice looking dials on the back of this unit aren't actually dials at all, but instead are rocker switches. So instead of being able to dial in your desired color temperature or intensity, you end up playing this game of using tiny little taps to try and get the exact number you want. The light is powered through a USB-C port. This isn't the most secure or professional of interfaces. To solve this, there's a little clamp on the side of the mounting bracket to hold the lead in place. This seems very crude compared to everything else that's so well thought out with this light. Worst still is the lead is super short. If you mount the light on a six foot stand, the lead barely touches the floor. What if you need the stand to go higher or you wanna boom the light out on an arm? You're gonna have to come up with a way of getting power to the unit. The instruction manual states that you can mount a V-mount battery to the side of the light, but you need a special mount to attach to the rails on the side of the unit. I've looked around and I can only find this on AliExpress. They don't even seem to mention it on the Coldbore website. If you do link a number of these lights up together, then you can't use any sort of light modifier with them because they block each other. When you have a number of smaller lights like this together, you can end up getting a very strange shadow from them because each beam of light produces its own shadow. So you would probably want to use some form of diffusion to stop that from happening, but you can't attach it to the light itself because there's not enough space between the units. Now you could still bounce the light off a wall or something to get a bigger, softer light, but you can't control the light spill from around the edge of the LED. And then you have the fact that one light with the power reflector attached is actually brighter than two lights next to each other without the reflectors. That's quite a few little annoying problems, but I'm not finished yet. Because of this power cube idea, the light doesn't have a traditional mounting point. Instead, you get this custom mounting bracket that slides into the chute on the light, and then you can attach this to the light stand. That makes this little thing very important. Lose this, and you can no longer mount the light to anything. All of these can, of course, be worked around, and I'm sure some of you have probably come up with a solution to these problems already. And none of them are what I would call deal breakers, but Mm. It's a real shame because this light is actually pretty cool. I think it would be great for anybody just starting out in content creation or just beginning their filmmaking journey. In fact, I would say that this is a useful light for anyone who wants a small, lightweight, versatile light that you can pretty much take with you anywhere and you can pretty much mount to anything. The problem is that that clever power cube design comes at a cost in terms of compromises in everyday function of the light. The light is really cool without the power cube system and has loads of great features packed into it. I don't think it needs the extra gimmick. It's like somebody trying to get your attention by performing bat flips, but they keep landing on their head. And then when you eventually go over and start talking to them, it turns out that they're a really talented singer. It's like, what's with all that other stuff? Just lead with what you're good at. 